Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Planty Part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Our discussion with gymnosperms. So first let us look at the basic characteristics of the gymnosperms. These are phanerogams with naked seeds. As I said, there are no covering inside which the seeds are present. They are fruitless plants. So fruit is basically the covering of the seed and nothing else. So if the seeds are naked, that obviously means that there are no fruits. These plants are perennial, evergreen and woody. So if you look at these plants and they're height wise also, they are really tall trees. So you, they are woody. They have a lot of wood in them. They are also evergreen. They do not lose their leaves. So they will always be like full green and a lot of wood in them. So that is how they look like. They have needle shaped leaves. So if you look at these leaves, they will be like very thin and uh, pointed leaves. So that is how they look like. They are also termed as soft wood. The gymnosperms are also called soft wood plants. Some of the examples of gymnosperms are pines, deodor, cycads. These are some of the examples of gymnosperms. Now, mostly you see a lot of gymnosperms in the hilly areas because the, those environmental conditions are more suitable for these plants to grow. So you will see a lot of them there. So let us look at the examples in a little more exhaustive way. This is how the pine trees look like. Just now I was talking about the seeds, right? The naked seeds. See, these are the reproductive structures of a pine tree or a gymnosperm. We will talk about them in detail a little later. But just to show you, this is how it looks like. Deodar, the tall trees which you see in the hilly areas. Cycads, which are not that tall, but then still they are also gymnosperm because you see, they also have pointed leaves and their reproductive system also matches with all other gymnosperms. The redwood tree. Now, redwood tree is the tallest tree species. So this is the tallest tree. As I said, gymnosperms are generally quite tall and this specific gymnosperm, the redwood tree, is the tallest of all the trees. So these are some of the examples of gymnosperms. So now let us talk about the structure of the gymnosperm. So how, how exactly the structure is, how are their roots, how are the leaves. So let us talk something about their structure. So let us look at the structure of the gymnosperms. Talking about their stems, they can have branched or unbranched stems. Now examples of plants where we have, where we see branched stems is pine. An example of plant where we see unbranched stem is cycus. So here this is cycus where we see unbranched stem. And this is pine where we see branched stems. So the stems actually branch out. But here if you see the stems are not branched out. These are like each one is an individual stem. Okay, so the next one is leaves. When I talk about their leaves, the leaves can be simple leaves. It can also be compound leaves. Now, what do we mean by a simple leaf and a compound leaf? A simple leaf is one which has a single blade. So if you see, this is the leaf blade and you just have one leaf with one blade. But when I say compound leaf, here the blades are divided into distinct parts called leaflet. So here if you see this is one blade which is divided into distinct parts called leaflet. So this one thing is a compound leaf. So one compound leaf has distinct leaflets. So here if you if I if I'm talking about a simple leaf axillary bud is present at the axle of this leaf. For example if there is a branch if there is a tree here and from here if there is a simple leaf. So birds, axillary birds appear here. But if I am talking about a compound leaf, the axillary bird is at the axle of the compound leaf and not on the axle of the leaflets. So you do not have axillary birds somewhere here because these are the axles of the leaflets. So you will only have axillary bird somewhere here. So if instead of a simple leaf, if there is a compound leaf like this, 
So you can have an axillary bud here, but you cannot have an axillary bud somewhere here. Now examples of plants where we see simple leaves would be mango, guava. These are the plants with simple leaves. If I'm talking about compound leaves, you can see rose, coriander. These are some of the plants which have compound leaves. Now when I'm talking about the gymnosperms, the gymnosperms can have both. They can have simple leaves also. They can also have compound leaves. The leaves are well adapted to withstand the extreme conditions. As I said, the leaves, these plants are all are evergreen plants. So every time they are green, that is because of the leaves. Because their leaves are made in such a way, the shape of the leaves are also made in such a way, they can adapt to the extreme conditions so that they can survive in all type of conditions. Let us now talk about roots. So roots in gymnosperms are generally tap roots. What are tap roots? Tap roots are the type of roots which are generally large and they taper the tapering plant roots and they grow downwards. Tapering means something, a, a shape like this. So you see it gradually tapers towards the bottom. So tapering roots and they grow downward. Now these kind of roots are quite difficult to uproot and transplant because they grow deep into the soil. Examples of tap roots would be carrot, radish. So all these are examples of tap roots. So once these roots are grown, it becomes really difficult to take it out because it holds the soil so strongly. Now the roots can also can be trap roots. Generally they are trap roots, but however they can also be coralloid roots or they can also exist as mycorrhiza. Now what are coralloid roots and what is mycorrhiza? Let us have a look in the next slide. So let us first talk about coralloid roots. What are coralloid roots? These are short branching irregular roots, small roots, not very long like or the tap roots. The coralloid roots are short branching irregular roots. Now they are produced in clusters at the base of the stem and it protrudes all over the ground. That means let us suppose if this is the stem, if these roots start somewhere here, so it will just happen like this. It, it will spread all over but these are all short roots but it will keep growing like this and it will protrude all over the ground. Now, the significance of these roots is that they have a symbiotic association with cyanobacteria, that is the blue-green algae. If you all remember what is symbiotic association? It is a type of mutual relationship between two organisms where both the organisms get benefited from each other. So in this case, the cyanobacteria, how the cyanobacteria gets help, it get, finds its shelter in these roots and how the roots get help. The roots get help because the cyanobacteria helps in nitrogen fixation in the soil. So if more nitrogen gets fixed in the soil, it is better for the growth of the plants. So that is how both the cyanobacteria and the roots, they both help each other. So these roots are basically a symbiotic association with cyanobacteria. Now these cyanobacteria helps in nitrogen fixation. How? Well, these cyanobacteria contain, I mean, these roots contain this blue-green bacteria or the cyanobacteria in the cortex. In these roots, somewhere it will contain these bacteria. This is how it looks like. If you see, example is cycas. Cycas have coralloid roots. So these are the root nodules of cycas. So they have this uh, cyanobacteria. What are the cyanobacteria that helps in nitrogen fixation? Examples are nostoc, anabina. So these are some of the cyanobacteria which helps in nitrogen fixation. So these are present in the outer layer of these roots. And these bacteria help in fixing nitrogen to the soil. So these are coralloid roots. So some gymnosperms have these coralloid roots while some others also exist as mycorrhiza. What is mycorrhiza? It is again a symbiotic association of the roots of gymnosperms with algae. So what kind of symbiotic association is this? This is seen in pine. So in pine, if you see, this is a uh, enlarged view of the roots of the pine tree. So it is again a symbiotic association of the roots with algae. Thank you.
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.